you know, I always have believed that you are stronger when you learn from those who criticize you and when you try to persuade people peacefully to come to your point of view. So I think there are ways that the current uh, government in Venezuela could maintain a very strong presence without in any way raising questions about the commitment to democracy. Okay. Going back to your administration, how would you describe the Obama strategy to deal with the inoculation of this new 21th century socialist raising in the most weak and poor countries in Latin? Well, first I think you have to ask yourself, why does this happen? And part of the reason it happens is because Latin America does have the largest wealth gap in the world. Uh, the gap between the richest and the poorest in Latin America is very wide. So there's a genuine concern on the part of many people. How do we get more uh, income into the hands of the people at the bottom and help them have a better life? Uh, I think there are a lot of ways of doing that, but it hasn't worked yet the way that many people had hoped. So there's a, there's a, a level of legitimate questioning. Like what, what do we need to do differently? But I'm one who believes that uh, you should be very cautious about how you proceed because there are always unintended consequences. And I don't think using democracy to undermine democracy is a good idea. I don't think that being in a position of authority uh, and then trying to prevent others from having the right to express themselves is a good idea. The quote, freedom for Cuba and the Cuban people, grounds a possibility for you under Castro political authority? Well, as you know, uh, we are engaged in uh, discussions with the uh, government of Cuba about matters that we believe are important, migration, for example. Uh, but we have made it very clear that uh, uh, we could not do much more in dealing with Cuba unless Cuba changes. Uh, the political prisoners need to be released. Uh, free and fair elections need to be held. Uh, I've always believed that if you think you're doing a good job for people, then go out and try to persuade them to vote for you in an honest, free and fair election. So we are um, opening uh, up dialogue with Cuba, but we are very clear that uh, we, we want to see some fundamental changes within the Cuban regime. Finally, are we going to see a picture with President Obama and President Chavez at the Oval, Oval Office? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I, as you know, I think President Obama was uh, uh, quite surprised uh, when he was given the book. Uh, but we're, we're trying to lower the temperature. We want to make it clear that there are ways for us to have a conversation with people we don't agree with on many issues. Uh, we don't want to see interference with other countries' internal affairs. We want to see a vibrant democracy that reflects uh, the very best that countries have to offer. We would like very much to uh, see leaders being effective and helping to uh, create greater economic opportunity for poor people. Uh, but we think there are ways that that can work that are not anti-democratic. Uh, That, that would be very effective uh, in enlisting the opinion of people and the support of people, uh, but leaving room for constructive and legitimate criticism. And, and that's what we would like to see. We certainly live with that in our own country, and it's worked pretty well for us for a very long time. Uh, so I would hope that it could be viewed as a, uh, a good idea for others as well. Thank you very much for the interview. Thank you, sir. Well, una idea muy clara la defensa de la libertad de expresión la idea de trabajar con Venezuela de trabajar conjuntamente en un ambiente de respeto de democracia y de libertad ¿será posible? ¿quién tiene la palabra? 
¿Dónde está la bola? ¿Quién la batea? Veremos.